Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to take you guys on a journey, a little trip. I'm going to go back in memory lane. I'm going to share some things with you that most of you don't know until now. We're here in Alaska and we're into October. We've already had a first snowfall. Weather's turning pretty quick and it's about time to put this old Camaro away for the season. But before I do that, I'm going to take it out and blow some of the dust off of it one more time. Come along with me. Super foggy day today for going out on the last ride, but I'll take it. At least it's not ice and snow. Any good trip around here starts out with a stop at Perk Up. These girls here know exactly how I like my coffee. The dogs are going to be so sad because they always get biscuits here and they're not with me right now. But that's okay. We're going to get on up the road a little bit and uh, I'm going to let you know what I'm here to talk to you about today. Hey. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Have a good day. See you next time. So the problem with this Camaro is it does not have a drink holder and has never had a drink holder since I have owned it. So uh, makes it a little bit tricky for stopping for your favorite beverage. idea how I'm supposed to tell the story about this car. I just don't. But let's see, short version. 13 year old boy gets a car. 13 year old boy falls in love with a car. 13, 14, 15, 16 year old boy rebuilds the car. Falls in love with it the whole time he rebuilds the car. 19 year old young man decides it's time to get rid of the car. got this car in 1980. It had been abandoned on the side of the road in Orlando, picked up by a salvage yard on Orange Blossom Trail, and eventually auctioned off after they got a title to it. My brother bought this car for 250 bucks. 
it's not a special Camaro. It's just a plain 307 two-speed power glide with a floor shifter console. But other than that, basic, super basic. My brother had the car from 1980 to 1983-ish. He did a, quite a few engine swaps and things on it. He was a mechanic at a General Motors dealership. But he also got in a lot of trouble with it. And my dad intervened and helped him with some of his uh, legal expenses. And in the end, my brother owed my dad money. And my dad decided to call it even with him with title to the car. I think it was a sum of about $1,100. And then my dad came to me. I'm the youngest of three brothers and one sister. My dad came to me and he said, hey, look, I know you love cars and I love cars. I still do, but I mean, I was eaten up with it when I was 13. My, uh, my dad said, hey, look, I will build this car with you, but you gotta stay in school, A, B, honor roll. No problem, Dad. No problem at all. So that embarked our journey. And over the next three years, he and I completely went through this car, ultimately painting it Renault Alliance Red, medium mica red, Cadillac Black Cherry Racing Stripes, put a four bolt main 350 with a Holley double pumper, Holley four barrel intake manifold, aluminum, some blackjack headers, turbo 350 transmission with a Vega stall converter, and then of all things that had a 276 rear gear, maybe 256 open rear gear. My dad knew what he was doing because I couldn't get in a lot of trouble with that. Just spin one wheel all the time. Oh, and we had air shocks in it. And I had to use those to pump it up because the 275 6015 BF Goodrich radial TAs I had on here would rub the fenders otherwise. Well, anyway, I loved this car. I took it with me in, from, from Florida to Michigan my junior, senior year in high school. I uh, got to take my girl to prom in it. Uh, just had a great time. Actually even got voted best car of my senior year. But things changed. In 1989, I was going to college. I moved back to Florida and I needed something more dependable. I also had a 74 Stingray. That's a whole other story. But that wasn't dependable and the AC didn't work. And anyway, I loved the new Corvettes at the time and I went down and I, like an idiot, I traded the 69 Camaro and the 74 Stingray plus $8,500 I borrowed to buy the 1985 Corvette. Made $209 a month payments on that thing for five years. Not smart. Anyway, getting there. So life goes on and around 2000, excuse me, around 1996, I sold that 85 Corvette to my best friend's little brother. Fast forward to 2003. Little brother had blown the engine in it, needed money to get married, and offered to sell it back to me in pieces, which I did. And by the way, that 85 Corvette, actually, um, I actually proposed to my wife sitting in it, um, you know, like in 1995. So anyway, I was uh, happy to get it back, summer of 2003 got the 383 that I put in there running again. So October 25th, 2003, my dad passed away, just boom. And broke my heart. And this was the one thing he and I really, really shared. I'm like an idiot, like a fool, I'd gotten rid of it. So uh, I went to our old insurance agent that was just getting ready to retire. He kept all of his records in boxes and he still had the VIN to this Camaro from 1989 and 2003. Got that, tracked it down, found the car about 200 miles away in Lakeland, Florida. A nice fellow named Jim Rice had it. Steve Lee, he had just gotten it back. He had taken it to a body shop four years before that. He bought it out of an ad in the newspaper. Looking for a Chevelle, saw the Camaro, thought that was a cool deal, bought it. And the body was going away, it was rusting. So a couple month body shop job turned into four years of body shop jail. They still didn't finish it. He'd gotten it back and he didn't know what to do with it. 
and uh, he got my letter and I tried to negotiate, negotiate, negotiate and he wouldn't sell the car. So one night I emailed him a picture of the 85 Corvette and I offered to trade plus give him some money and he took it. So in February 2004, I got the Camaro back. My son was born in March 2004, and man, does time fly. So anyway, I redid it. We've taken it racing, autocrossing. I've driven it across from Florida to Ohio and back. We ultimately moved to Illinois, ran it all around Illinois, and then we moved to Alaska in 2021. And go back and look at my video, you'll see how we hauled this thing on the um, trailer all the way to the port in Seattle, and then we shipped it to Alaska. And so here we are. It is October 2023. This October 25th, it'll be 20 years since I lost my dad. It's February. It'll be 20 years since I got the Camaro back. So what do you do with it from here? What do you do? I don't know. I don't know. It's not a car anymore. It's just kind of a member of the family. And I would be lying to you if I told you it made me smile all the time. A lot of times I look and it makes me sad because it reminds me I lost my dad. And the only reason why I got it in the first place, the only reason why I got this car in the first place was because of my dad. And the only reason why I went and bought it back was because of my dad. And so it's a reminder of the good and the bad. I miss him so bad. I miss him so bad, even now. I didn't just lose my dad, I lost my friend. I lost my mentor. And I will never be half the man that he was. But I have this to remember, and there's joy and there's pain. It's such a hard video to do, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna put it up and pretty soon the snow's gonna be on the ground and um, <laughs> we won't be thinking about going riding in the Camaro. But thank you for coming with me on my last ride of the year. Foggy, foggy, cold day. It was a good ride, thank you for coming along with me.